Hi, and welcome back to Leslie's Lab. In this episode, we're going to tear down and hack a laser barcode scanner. So let's stick this on the bench and take a look. So this is a little Metrologic laser barcode scanner that I picked up off eBay recently for just a few bucks. Um, if you want the model number, it's an MS9540. Um, I picked this up really because I wanted the scanner out of it. I wanted the little scanning mirror uh, to do some laser effects. Um, it looks like there might be other components in there as well. It looks, it, it feels to me, it starts scanning when you move it around. So I guess there's either a, a mercury switch or a, an accelerometer of some description in there uh, that picks up the movement. Um, this actually does work. Um, I'm sure this will be the shortest teardown in the world. I don't think there's much in it. Um, but yeah, if I scan a barcode with it, and press the button, um, it detects our barcode. Um, so yeah, pretty, pretty cool piece of kit. Um, and for the price, you know, like I say, five bucks. So let's just whip this apart and see what's in it. I better turn the power off first. There we go. Um, it's very, very easy to get in these. You just pull off the rubber and we've got a couple of screws. Um, yeah, so I'm wanting to, uh, wanting to put this mirror in front of a, a, a relatively high powered uh, DPSS laser just to do some sort of scanning effects through some smoke. Um, it'd be kind of useful for my videos and for, for demoing various bits and pieces. Um, so let's see what we've got in here. Oh, there goes the front window. Ah, look. How crafty is that? There's another screw. And it's a tight one as well. Hang on, we need a, a more decent screwdriver for this job. I can't imagine there'll be very much to see in this, um, but there'll be some useful bits and pieces um, for sure. Awesome. So what have we got in here? Uh, we've got two circuit boards uh, connected together with flat flex. I'll not uh, disconnect. Oh, that's handy. So little connector on the bottom there. What else do we have to pull at? Anything? Oh, one screw tucked underneath the flat flex. Yeah, another PCB for a button. I will get that out. I'll just pop it out. Let's disconnect it. Awesome. So we have a little PCB for the LEDs um, up at the top there and presumably the button as well. And then we've got our main PCB with the work on it. So let's have a look and see what we've got. Um, so we've got what looks like a, a photo sensor on this side. Um, we've got a mirror. Uh, this is a, a stationary mirror. Oddly, there's a hole in the middle. Not entirely sure what that's all about. Um, we've got our laser diode mounted in a very nice looking little heat sink there. And then somewhere in there, we've got our scanning mirror. It looks like the mirror is mounted on a, like a reed. Excellent. Let's plug it in and see what it looks like. Obviously, we won't be able to scan a barcode because we've removed the button, but... Oh, that still works. Let's see if we can make it wake up. Oh, I've got a piece of paper to put in front of it. Oh, there we go. Yeah, so we're still working. Um, on closer inspection, I'll just unplug this because I want to stick my eyeball up to it and obviously it's got a laser in it. Um, on closer inspection, the, the mirror assembly is quite interesting. Um, we've got a mirror mounted on a, like a little flexible steel reed and then there's a solenoid and I presume that the solenoid um, sort of hits it you know, a few times a second to get the thing to start oscillating, um, which is really sort of interesting. It's, a, it's an interesting design. Um, I suppose the thing to do before I really tear it down would be to get the scope onto that. Um, just to see what kind of voltage levels we're expecting, because obviously I want to take this out um, and maybe you know, like do a do a line scan with a 50 milliwatt uh, DPSS laser. So I'll just set up the scope and we'll have a look. So I've just got the scope hooked up to the uh, the solenoid there, and if I put a piece of paper in front of it, it'll trigger the thing and it'll give us a signal. Uh, so let's take a look at that. 
So there's our resulting signal. Uh, it looks to be about uh, five volts peak to peak, um, and it comes in at about 37 point odd hertz. Um, so yeah, fine. Uh, we should be able to drive that really, really easily off a function generator. Um, let's strip out that mirror and uh, laser assembly. Before I finally sort of tear this thing down, you know, we'll have a look at the other, the other bits and pieces. Uh, we've got a little buzzer on the bottom there. There's something labeled SW2, um, which looks like maybe a reed switch. Um, perhaps this was designed to fit in a, in a cradle with a magnet under it, that would kind of make sense. Um, we've got presumably a microcontroller here with a little clock crystal. We've got a buzzer that we can, uh, we can mooch off of this thing, uh, do something with. Um, the, at, at the front we've got two sensors here, uh, and it looks like these are for proximity detection so that the laser only comes on when you've moved it um, close enough to scan um, an object. Um, there's the photodiode, which will be really, really interesting. That's definitely gonna, going to come out. Um, we've got a little uh, gold-coated mirror here, um, which will definitely be handy as well. Uh, the laser diode obviously will keep hold of that. Um, not really much else uh, on the PCB there. I'll try and get this right up to the camera, and maybe in the middle there, you'll be able to see the reed um, hanging off. So the, the, the pivot point is over here, and then we've got a metal reed um, with the mirror on it. And then we've got the solenoid to uh, to sort of hit the reed, to uh, magnetize the reed, I guess, and set it vibrating. Uh, and then, of course, we've got a little heat sunk laser diode there. Cool. Uh, anyway, should be relatively easy to get this to bits. That should be released. We'll just remove the flat flex. There we go. Nothing exciting underneath there. Here is the scanner assembly itself. Um, so I guess the thing to do now is let's stick this on an optical bench um, and fire a, um, a, a reasonably powered DPSS laser at it, see if we can make some nice, uh, nice smoke effects. That'd be kind of cool. So I've just done a quick setup here. Uh, there's other stuff in the background like the dye laser and things because I don't want to disturb those. It's a work in progress. Um, but over here, I've got my 50 milliwatt uh, DPSS laser. And then I've got the scanner, uh, which I've hooked up to a function generator and I'm currently feeding it um, about 20 hertz or so. Um, turns out it's actually widely variable. Um, let's blow some smoke in the beam and see what's happening. Absolutely fantastic. So yeah, we've got a fantastic smoke effect. Um, absolutely brilliant. So we'll see what happens if we alter the frequency that we're driving this with. We're currently driving it at 30 hertz. Let's get some magic on in there. Yeah, it's driving it slightly out of resonance, um, but yeah, it's, it's fine. It's actually a really, really nice effect. Um, very, very nice indeed. Fantastic. I love the liquid, the liquid smoke effect. It looks amazing. Um, let's really push it. Let's see what happens if we take it up to 40 hertz, 50 hertz, 60 hertz, 70 hertz. Now, now we're just getting a much, much narrower beam. Let's go to 35. It looks like it's probably resonant. Um, which actually makes a lot of sense. Let's go one at a time. Just judging by the fan angle, it seems to me that around about 37 hertz is where it's at. Really, really nice. Fantastic. Um, yeah, for five bucks, um, I've got myself a nice little uh, scanning mirror assembly. Um, I'm sure if I get a second barcode scanner, I can maybe do an XY config and maybe draw some lizard use patterns, which would be pretty cool as well. Um, really, really nice. So I've got the scan rate set to about 39 hertz now, and we've got a really, really nice wide green liquid smoke effect. Absolutely fantastic. 
absolutely spe it's, it's actually more spectacular to see than what I can see on the camera monitor there. Thanks for watching this episode of Les's Lab. If you want to see more content like this, don't forget to hit like and subscribe down below, and I'll see you guys next time.